In this case, uh, because this highlight area is relatively small in the image, um, I wasn't too concerned with having all of the detail possible out here uh, because I want to have I wanted to have kind of a feeling of bright light here um, and warmth uh, out outside here. Uh, so I, I did meter it to protect some of the highlights, but I wasn't too concerned if some of them clipped. Um, the main thing was to give myself enough highlight detail out here as well as have uh, some shadow information that's not going to be too noisy. Um, as cameras get newer and newer, they have improved greatly uh, when it comes to uh, low noise, um, whether it's shooting in low light um, and having cleaner cleaner shadows or even just at, in a bright situation like this uh, with a long exposure at ISO 100. Um, as, they, as the cameras get newer and the sensors get better, these darker areas get cleaner and cleaner. So um, digital cameras still struggle with overexposure that looks really harsh uh, when the highlights clip here. Um, they, uh, it's one artifact of digital that um, I think just really never looks good. Um, so that's, that's still an issue that persists, but as, as the cameras get better, um, you can shoot to protect these highlights and have confidence that when you open up the shadows there will be lots of information in there and it, it's uh, cleaner than it would have been on an older camera of say you know um, five ten years ago if you shot something like this and tried to open up the shadows a lot you'd find a lot of ugly things in there um, Lightroom gives us some tools to deal with that but um, if you get a cleaner image file to begin with and you don't have to process that stuff out then uh, you're going to get through your editing that much faster. Um, let's move on to our presence tools here. Uh, presence, as I mentioned uh, before, um, so clarity uh, gives the appearance of some extra sharpness. That's really, it's more of an optical illusion. Um, you can have sharpness, real true sharpness, that's uh, a function of resolution. Um, but you can have the appearance of sharpness with contrast. That's the reason why when you go to Best Buy or Fry's or someplace like that, anywhere where they're selling TVs, generally the TVs out of the box come with the contrast turned up all the way because it makes the image appear to be sharper than it may actually be. Um, so just as a test, if you go, let's say, you know, go into one of those stores, pick a few TVs, turn the contrast down to something that's a little bit more moderate where you have some, some shadow detail and you have some highlight detail, um, then compare them and see which one is actually sharper. Um, depending on the feel you want in the image, you may decide that you want to add a little uh, the appearance of some sharpness. We have other sharpening tools further down here, um, but let's add some clarity. Uh, well, let's Let's just push this slide around and see. So let's zoom on an area, let's say in here. Actually, how about, let's find some angles. Let's say here, and I don't need to be zoomed in that far. Let's say right here. Um, and as I look at this, I'm not sure how much of this will translate uh, on your displays after, you know, YouTube finishes compressing this video. Some of this might not be as apparent to you, but on my screen I can see there is some a little color noise in here, so we'll, we'll have to attend to that at some point. Um, but let's add some cl clarity here. So as I push this, you can see it gets, seems like it's a little, a little sharper, a little crunchier. Uh, when I go the other way, you can see it, it seems to get softer, um, almost like diffusion. So we go this way. Gets that kind of fuzzy feel like a diffusion filter would have. We go this way and it gets extra sharp. Um, what clarity is doing is just adding contrast to the midtones. So whereas this contrast slider adjusts the contrast of the entire image, and you can see um, all of that work we did to massage these things into a better uh, position, now we've got some clipping in here in the shadows or, or really close to it. Um, we've definitely got highlights that are clipping again and it's just it's a little extreme. Let's turn that back down. By comparison this feels very soft and subtle but 
uh, when you get used to it again, you realize this, this still has a lot of contrast in it. Um, so what Clarity does is just add some contrast to the midtones. This, this can be uh, pleasing depending on the image and how much of it you use. Um, I tend to, if I do use it, I tend to not go over about maybe 25 because um, I don't want it to be too heavy handed. Uh, but often I don't I don't use any, um, so that's again that gets into uh, matters of taste. But um, you know I like it to the point where if the image needs to feel sharp and I want detail and texture to stand out a little bit more, I might add some. But there might be other kinds of images that uh, I feel like the sharpening that you get in camera is is enough often. Uh, let's look at uh, vibrance versus saturation. Um, some of you are thinking, well, if this tool is similar to contrast, but it's just a more targeted version of it, why don't they pair it with it or put it close to it? That's a good question. Uh, I think it, you could make the case that maybe this should be up here in the same way that vibrance and saturation are next to each other. But for whatever reason, they put them down here, um, group down here. Uh, but let's look. So saturation... You guys have probably all seen this. So we push it this way. We're saturating all of the colors. So we go this way. We're desaturating them to the point now we have a black and white. Uh, but that's affecting all of the colors in the entire image. That's a, a good example of a global adjustment. Whereas vibrance is much more subtle. You can see that some of the less saturated colors are coming up and getting a little more saturated. So our red is not changing a whole lot. Even as we go down, you can see the red in the in the bags out here. It kind of persists a little longer. It's one of the last things to go as we turn down the vibrance. Um, this is a nice one to have sometimes. Um, if you just want to give it that just slightly, um, just give it a little bump. A vibrance can help. And it's, again, it, it um, it can improve the image, but it doesn't look like it's been manipulated. Uh, usually when, when an image starts to look very manipulated is when you distract people from the content of the image and what it is that you're trying to get across. Um, in my view, it's better to uh, have an image that um, we're not distracted by those sorts of things. If we find ourselves um, being taken out of the image and thinking more about the person's retouching techniques or things like that, um, that's an unnecessary distraction and probably a red flag that maybe there isn't much content to the image. Um, so watch out for those things. Um, now that you have some uh, an idea of the distinction between a global and a, a local adjustment, let's go back up here to our white balance tools. Uh, we haven't really dealt with those yet. Uh, white balance is another example of a global adjustment tool. When I change manually adjust the color temperature of the image, you can see that we're affecting all of the colors in the image. And we don't have to push it too far before you see some pretty radical changes. Um, as it gets warmer, you can see we really start having a lot of issues with uh, clipping here. Those highlights are really um, got pretty harsh. As we go this way, if we go far enough, then we run into the same problem. Um, and you can see it's all of these things have been added to our history, which is getting longer and longer here. Um, I'm going to hit Command Z and undo that. We'll go back to the color temperature that it was shot with. Um, so you can manually adjust this. You can try some of the uh, presets here that should be pretty similar. You, know, you, might, you might find some differences, but they should be pretty similar to your camera presets. So you can see there's as shot. This is how it was shot. Um, we could go daylight is not a huge difference between those two. Uh, tungsten, it's much, much bluer than this. Uh, this was a, an interesting situation because we had um, pretty bright daylight outside here, and then inside we had these fluorescent lights that were um, not necessarily your standard fluorescent color temperature. Even here you can see it has uh, kind of a purplish feel to it, so the fluorescent wasn't qu quite right. Um, 
I was shooting this uh, kind of quick. I didn't have an assistant um, and didn't really have time to shoot a color checker in every single room that I went to. So I would test out these presets in my camera and then a lot of times I had to just use a custom one where I kind of split the difference between maybe fluorescent and tungsten or daylight and fluorescent, something like that. Um, but you can see um, balancing for this out here, this is a little bit warmer than daylight and it causes the interior lights here to be uh, quite a bit warmer. So let's go back. Um, let's see. So you can see um, we can, as our history gets longer, we can go back through and try to figure out where it was exactly that um, things went south. This isn't exactly what I want for this. Um, let's turn that off. Um, let's go back right about here, I think, was pretty good. Um, it's a little cool inside here, but outside it looks... Um, it looks pretty good. It's relatively neutral out here. Um, when I look at this color temperature, that's, uh, it is a little warmer than a tungsten white balance would be. It has one point more magenta than your, than just, uh, you know, out of the camera zeroed out here. Um, but we could come back and deal with this later. Um, we could also try it here as black and white. Um, Further down, we have more controls where we can, uh, rather than just simply convert it to a grayscale image like we did here, we can actually change the relation of some of these values so we could um, brighten this, darken that, um, because we still have access to all the color information that was recorded in the image. We haven't thrown it away. Um, it's still there, but we'll, that'll be uh, something we cover later. Uh, so let's go back to color. And just to show you how the eyedropper works, uh, I don't really recommend using this unless you're shooting some sort of a gray card or a color checker because you just never know. There might be times you shoot something and there isn't anything that's a neutral gray, black, or white in it um, to balance to. Uh, maybe you're, you shoot a landscape and there's nothing that, that would be that neutral gray. Um, or you might have things in here. There's lots of grays in here. Uh, we can try it. Let's, that's actually not too bad. Um, you can see it warmed it up a little bit. It doesn't quite get as warm as the actual daylight preset would be, and it added a little bit of magenta to that. Um, so in this case, you can see when we, when we balance down here, these in theory should be almost the same color, but you can see it changed. It's a little bit different. Um, so the reason I say don't use this unless you have a color checker is that you may find yourself like the dog chasing its tail. Uh, we could, you know, balance this image this way, then we go to a different room and we try to click on the same, you know, gray uh, machine and maybe it's not quite the same gray and we get something that just has a different feel. And if you're trying to have edit a group of images to feel consistent and coherent, um, you might really have some headaches trying to get them to conform to each other um, when your color balance is all over the place. Um, but we could use something like this. We could go balance in here. That definitely doesn't look right. We have a, a lot of magenta in there. Um, so that's why I say this can be uh, tricky. Sometimes it gets it pretty close, sometimes it doesn't. If we were using the eyedropper on a gray card or a color checker, we would have accurate white balance. So that basically covers um, all of the tools that we have available in the basic panel here. Um, again, if you have any questions, as always, uh, feel free to post them in the uh, tech support forum. Otherwise, uh, send me an email and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.